This week I'm reinventing the Adirondack chair. So I wanted to create an Adirondack chairs for the front of my house, but I wanted them to be extremely comfortable, um, have more of a clean, modern design, and I wanted them to be super easy to build. So this week, after four different prototypes and many hours of testing and tweaking just a little bit, I've come up with these Adirondack chairs that take um, about $30 in materials, so just a little more than a plastic chair, and I can now build one from fresh boards, so doing all the cutting and all the assembly in under an hour. Um, and these are by far the most comfortable Adirondack chairs that I've ever sat in. So this is how I build them. To build these chairs, you need three two by fours and a one by 10. You only have to make one angle cut and that is the two by four stringers. And usually this is a really hard cut to make on traditional Adirondack chairs. But in this plan, I'm gonna make it really simple. So you just cut your, your stringers 20 degrees off square, ends are parallel, long point to short point measurement. The cut list is all in the plans, so don't feel like you need to write all this down right now. You can download that all for free and get everything you need. So we'll set those aside and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest. So um, you'll need two stringers, two arms, two back supports, and then five shorter boards that make up the legs and the cross supports. So if you have the ability on your saw to just set a stop block like I'm doing and just production cut all five of them so they're exactly the same, that is um, going to help you with getting repeatable perfect cuts. Okay, back to those stringers. So um, I need to cut the bottom off of it so it rests flat on the ground. Um, it'll all make sense in a second if you don't understand what I'm alluding to there. So what I do, and this is not hard, is just use a square and mark 90 degrees off square from the 20 degree cut that we cut on the miter saw and then just cut on the line with a circular saw. Um, one tip is if you can put the saw where the majority of the saw foot is on the board, that will help you get a straight cut. And then um, I cut the first one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it as a pattern for the second one. Um, the two should be identical. All right, so that's it for cutting those stringers. I told you, it was easy. And they'll set just like that with that cut part on the ground and at that angle. All right, so let's start assembling those legs. The first thing is I'm attaching the arm to the front leg. I'm just using two, two and a half inch self-tapping screws. So these are the ones with the star bits. You can find them at most any home improvement store. All right, so normally attaching a stringer is like a guessing game. Like, is this the right spot? Should I go up a little higher? Because you're attaching an angle to a straight board. But the way that I designed this plan is you just make a mark on the leg, which it's given to you in the plan, and then you attach the stringer to the top of that mark. And it all works out just perfect, just like that. One down, I'm gonna do another one. The same, but in mirror, uh, because we want those stringers on the inside. So just measuring up on that leg, making that mark, and then lining the top point of that stringer up with the mark that I made. I'm kind of flipping things around a little bit so that I can clamp on my clamp table. Um, it's just really nice. Like if you had two people, by two people I don't mean my two people, <laughs> but if you had like a older second person that could hold boards for you in place, that would even make assembly faster. So see how they're both in mirror? You don't wanna make them identical, you wanna make them the same but in mirror. All right, so let's start putting this chair together. So these cross support boards, um, there's a couple different ways that you can put them together, but I'm choosing to use my Craig jig on the inch and a half setting, and I'm gonna use two and a half inch pocket holes. 
Um, I highly recommend this way because the screws are hidden. It's just a nice, precise joint. It's easy to attach. And um, I promise you, you're gonna love these chairs so much. It's worth the extra time to do a good job, to use the right type of joinery. And um, if you haven't, to invest in the Craig Jig. So you only need to drill pocket holes on two of the boards that are left. So remember there was five that you cut that are identical, two will go for the legs, two will get pocket holes, and then the fifth one, we got another special use for it, but not quite yet. Man, my shop's a mess. <laughs> it's hard to do everything, especially when the kids are home and um, I can't just let them be on a device all day. I gotta keep them busy. So um, we just aren't getting as much done as we normally do. All right, so with the Craig Jig, I clamp it to my table and um, just throw those two and a half inch screws. Use the exterior Craig Jig screws if you can. Um, even though all these screws are hidden, it's just a good idea so they don't rust out. Now working on a flat level surface is super important here because if you work on a, you know, a surface that isn't level, then your chair is not gonna be level. Okay, so that's the back piece, and now this is the front apron, if you will, kind of right behind where your calves will sit, if that makes sense. So I'm just using gravity to my advantage, um, where everything is kind of holding itself up. I don't need to clamp, and just drive in those Craig Jig screws. And then just flipping it over. The chair is nice and lightweight, and uh, the frame is, I mean, it, it ends up being a pretty good sized chair, but the frame isn't huge, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, it's a good idea to test and make sure that your chair isn't wobbly or anything, because you certainly can fix things at this point. So now let's just start with the seat board. So I chose to use one by 10 just because I wanted a more of a modern look, um, but you can use other materials. Um, but you want to keep your seat um, length about the same as I'm doing here, about 18 and a half inches. Now notice I'm drilling at a slight angle because my drill won't fit under the arms. That is actually a good thing because um, putting your screws in an angle will help with the structure. Now for the back. Remember that fifth board that we cut that I haven't used yet? Okay, this is where it's going to come in handy. I'm going to use it to support the back. Uh, the reason that you need to do this is because that back could be sagging and it isn't supported yet So we need it to be at exactly the same height as the front and um, That fifth board is cut exactly the same as the front legs So I'm just taking the final seat back supports Holding them flush to the bottom of the stringer putting two screws in and then putting two screws into the backrest and this ties it all together now you could do a permanent back leg, but I wanted to have that classic Adirondack ch chair look where the back is kind of floating in place. And um, so that's why I'm not putting that back leg in there. I'm just using it right now to support the back and get it right while I attach it. Okay, so that final back leg piece, I'm just gonna pull it out and it's gonna cover up the base of those leg supports to kind of give it a more finished look. And also it's structural, so I'll tie it into the side stringers and also tie it into the back leg supports. So a couple tips with the screws, um, I'm using these self-tapping screws and they go in seriously like butter, but I'm also using an impact drill and that really helped. It's a little bit louder, but um, it just makes driving screws so easy. Looking good. This is like the really fun part when it starts coming together. Okay, so for the final back pieces, I've got them cut out and I'm just gonna lay them in place here. 
And certainly, if you wanted a taller back, you could make a taller back. Um, I did a lot of testing and I kind of found like this was the sweet spot where it didn't look overwhelmingly tall, but it was still supporting your back. But if you're tall, you can just cut those back stringers taller. So just starting my screws and then kind of lining it up and um, screwing it in. Trust your eyes um, and just kind of get those gaps even. So, but remember, we want to keep a gap at the base too, so water doesn't pool at the base of that seat and rot that wood out. So just bring it up a little bit, give your water somewhere to drain. What's so awesome about these chairs is you're getting like really low maintenance. You don't have to deal with a cushion. You don't have to worry about, is it snowing? Should I bring the chair cushions in? You know, is it raining? Are the cushions wet? You get all that comfort in this chair without having to really maintain anything so it's, oh man you have to sit in this chair you have to make it to get how comfortable and how awesome it is he likes it so comfortable so uh, we actually did a lot of testing I'm about five feet four inches tall and uh, there's still plenty of room in the seat for me. My husband is over six feet tall and he fits just fine in here too. So for most average size people, this chair is perfect. The recline on the back and the seat is, I mean, we did four different iterations of this chair to get it just right. And um, if you build it, leave a comment and let me know if you think it's comfortable or not. Uh, we try to keep nice wide arms on it. So you can rest a drink, it fully supports your arms. Um, all of the framing is 2x4s, so it's very strong, and um, you know 2x4s are just a lot more weather resistant than 1x material. Um, the seating is 1x material, but you could use 2x, you could use a lot of different things on it. Um, it's just decking, so you could use you know anything from reclaimed pallets to um, Trex decking on the, on the top. So all in all, I couldn't be happier with how this chair turned out. Um, I'm like, can't wait to get these plans out, can't wait to see the first brag post um, because we really, really worked very hard to get this plan just right for you guys. So thank you again for supporting this channel, for watching, and um, the free plans are linked right in the description, so head on over there and build it, and please let me know what you think, send us a picture. Thank you again. Bye.